INS Transportation Incorporated. Um, nowadays, we have over 100 trucks, Fura, uh, that we haul freight uh, within the states of the United States. Plus, uh, about my educational background, I did study at this university, at Westminster University, and finished it in 2017. Um, during my studies, I have been to um, United States twice with J1 program. Uh, once I have been to Buffalo, New York. Actually, I have been to there twice, so I have lived there about eight months as a J1 guy. I used to cook food, not nothing related to this industry. Um, after that, I kind of tried my best to go to the United States one more time uh, to broaden my mind and join a kind of company that is called Army Inc. Uh, that is located in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, we used to kind of uh, do some logistics stuff that we have never known. And the company closed down after we made so many mistakes, unfortunately. And then actually these mistakes gave us some more experience not to make them in the future. Uh, coming back to Uzbekistan, Tashkent, uh, I kind of gained the attention of one of the trucking companies. Uh, it's called ZNS Cargo Incorporated nowadays. Um, uh, we kind of, with my friends, uh, tried to run this business. It was very hard. I'm talking about 2014, so it's about seven years ago now. And then, um, after I finished my target, nowadays from 2019, I've been uh, managing the company that I told you guys, Anas Transportation Incorporated. So before starting the uh, topic, Mojna uh, Slavic, Before sliding the next slide, can you guys move to the next slide? Um, the topic we are going to cover is not something I will be trying to, go, to captivate you guys to join all of you. It's just one of the industries that you might be able to get into it and get some money and make some uh, good living. You know, I'm not going to persuade you guys, I'm not going to attract you guys, the whole say, hey guys, join this kind of industry. It's just one of the pieces of information that you're going to get into your fact book. So, uh, logistics, uh, when I was doing a coursework, you guys do also coursework in the first course, uh, uh, level three, right? Level three students. Uh, we were given a coursework to do kind of interview with all the businesses. Uh, I wanted to do kind of radios, FM radios. One of my friends whose name was, I guess, Fushida, she was my um, course mate, they came to me, uh, Davron, do you know any kind of logistics company that does uh, business in Uzbekistan? I said, why? She said she wanted to somehow interview this kind of business. I was laughing at her so bad because I didn't know anything about, I was saying, Fushida, why, why do you want to interview? It's so many good businesses out there, I was saying. And that time God said, you are going to go to this business and do this and make sure you're going to earn good money. So I'm now in this business for over seven years and trying to do my best. Um, before I tell something about it, I would like to know about you guys, your guys' opinions, what the logistics is. And first of all, if someone is going to be active, I'll try to give some price at the end of the lecture. What do you guys think? What is logistics in general? Transporting goods from A to B, yes sir. Transportation, okay. Training company, okay. Delivery, in one word. All right, um, this is all the people think actually, how the logistics is, like they say, uh, delivering products or we say cargo freight loads from point A to B. Yes, this is one of the general aims of logistics, but logistics is very what? It does a lot of stuff, which we call cross-docking, lumber detention, or uh, tons of things to learn, you know? Uh, before that, um, I would like to somehow get into this logistic and then we'll move to uh, why these, these businesses in Uzbekistan and where these businesses been before. So just about the logistics, next slide please. Um, we have different modes of logistics. Uh, I'll try to show you guys now.
that one. Um, we have mainly five modes of transportation. I know you guys are in different spheres of life, like some of you guys just doing some uh, cyber gaming, some of you guys are doing some restaurant business with your daddy, or some of you guys are doing something different. But this is kind of strange because a business guy, a Westminster student sitting and learning about logistics, why does he need? But anyways, you just need to learn the types of uh, logistics and then we move on to the next top points. So first one is railways, right? So the transportation we call railways. So um, to warm up and to get into a bit relaxation, uh, I again want you guys to speak about the good sides and bad sides from your own point. What do you guys think? What are the disadvantages and advantages of railway transportation? Anything? Okay, what's your name? Russell Beck, right? Russell Beck. He says cost effective. Cost effective means, what do you mean? Like this cost effective, the word cost effective is kind of a negative term, you know? But you want to say this is kind of positive, right? Okay, so it's an inexpensive transportation mode, yes, sir. Okay, huge capacity, you say, huge capacity. Okay, so he's saying, uh, my friend, what's his name? Asadullah, thank you very much. He's saying it's a huge capacity, but there is kind of uh, intercontinental limitations. He means, I get what he means. He means uh, from point A to B, it's not always like possible to deliver product into the point where they want exactly, because there are some road limitations in the United States. Uh, and one more thing, we're going to talk about the only United States logistics because we will not have time to talk international logistics as well because this one is a very huge topic, you know. And yes, there is a huge risk of uh, damage when the train stops fast or something. The, the damage risk is always high in this business. America uses about 10% of uh, transportation deliveries by this service. And the next one is what? Water transportation. Any ideas? Yes, sir. Okay, so he says uh, it's it's not going to be only local transportation mode, but we can deliver internationally. Yes, sir. And you? Cheapest transportation. Uh, can you elaborate the cheapest word by uh, some dollars? What do you think one container costs to deliver from Europe to the United States? What do you think? Just guess. No idea? How much do you want? <laughs> Okay. 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 So, uh, yes, it is cheap because the, the huge capacity again in the ship it can take up to ten thousand containers at a time. And he said, I wanted to know the price of delivery of one container from point A to B. It's around three to four thousand dollars nowadays, from let's say uh, Europe to America. But China to America is a bit. Uh, expensive, so it's around five thousand dollars. Just to imagine how these all money plays. And any ideas? Any more ideas? Yes. Okay. Yes, there are country limitations where there is no water. They cannot receive the ship cargo. Exactly. Like, you have to ask more transportation modes, like you can use the railway after that or something like that, right? Okay. Right. And there is a bad weather sensitiveness in uh, uh, water transportation since there is always weather conditions that is changeable all the time. That means uh, sometimes the delivery time will be prolonged longer than they expect. Like, uh, we ordered a car from the United States uh, last month. Uh, we bought a car in from the United States and we sent it from ship. That's just for our office. So it's been 35 days now. Uh, they say it is pinking in around somewhere in the ocean. So next 30 more days we should be waiting for that car now. They said there is huge kind of uh, hurricanes on the water. So you know. Air transportation. What is that? Yes. 
Thank you very much. We didn't know about it. <laughs> and, and it's expensive. All right. So what else? What do you guys think is the bad side of this uh, transportation mode? Yes, sir. In terms of capacity, it's less than uh, less than ship. Yes, uh, the air transportation is actually very ubiquitous in the United States. You guys know the Amazon company, right? The, this company has Amazon Prime Air service, which delivers within hours from state to state. You know, um, there was a huge issue with uh, weather sensitiveness of air. Uh, we we were we, there is kind of board uh, where a customer board and a carrier board. We as a trucking company are called carriers. So uh, you guys you guys can go on Amazon.com and buy laptops, uh, caps, or anything like golf clubs and anything. And as soon as you guys press buy and shipping checkout, you will be shown on the board of those trucking companies who can book this fleet and deliver it, you know? See, one of the guys actually booked it as a fast delivery. He might have to go somewhere like faster, I don't know. And uh, Amazon Prime Air did, could not find the airplane, you know? They posted this freight, uh, let's say, for 200 miles. Um, 200 miles? So they use miles, right? In the United States, it's about 300 kilometers. But in general, while well, working in this industry, they never say uh, how many kilometers it is, and you don't have to think that way always. 200 miles. They paid six thousand dollars for this freight. Six thousand dollars for four hours of work is very, very good money. It's very good money. And I called Amazon. They said. Um, we need a team on that. The team means like two guys in the truck to drive one by one. I said $200, 200 miles is going to be four hours of delivery. He said, if one dies, it doesn't want to drive. So they put the customer preference on a top priority all the time. And uh, because they couldn't find the prime air, that one, my driver went there with the truck. Big guy, big truck. And he said, they didn't load me anything. I guess there's Archman. I was like, why? They paying crazy money. Do you should check one more time. He said there was a small Galaxy 3 phone that cost like two hundred dollars max as a new, but they paid six thousand dollars for that. Can you imagine that? They're losing about five thousand eight hundred dollars on one freight, and I was like shocked. They called them. So why are you guys paying that much money? You guys are losing more, like three thirty times more than what it costs. And he said we don't lose money at, at all because. America is cruel, you know. They said someone connects his bank account or in the future to get it like a uh, fixed price paid and they can deliver fast. Those people, whenever they die, they will still eat that money, you know. So they say we have over 7 million users who already gone, but we still eat their money. In America, there is, no, there is a kind of hope. You never can withdraw money of your dad if your dad is like past, you know. The person should have left some inheritance letter. So this is how they leave out. But anyways, as a trucking company, we don't care, unfortunately. We kind of need to make money. And what was that last one? Uh, not last, pipeline. So pipeline transportation, what is that? Okay, so uh, pipeline, poor transport. transport uh. Uh, pipeline transportation. Uh, what do you think is good and bad side of this transportation? Some of, some of you guys haven't seen, I guess, this transportation mode before. Me, myself, I, as I started, I also was kind of new to this guy. Yes. Gas, chemicals, right? Is there any, like, disadvantages of this transportation? A lot cost of like, it, all right. Okay. Yes, miss? Exactly. There is always kind of risk of... Uh -huh. 
It actually happened once when, uh, since I've been working. Yes, they send a huge capacity of, uh, we say, gasoline. They use gasoline in America, so it, it burst out, it exploded actually. There is a, not a huge percentage, but about 2% of the risk, you know. But there is always political limitations in terms of other countries. Like, uh, our country tried to gain gasoline benzene uh, from Russia, like two years ago. Uh, Kazakhstan didn't allow to, to do that, because Kazakhstan need to, need to sell the benzene to us, you know. If they allow, if Russia, if they allow us, we could buy that 80 mark of benzene for about 4,000, 4,000, 4,800 sums, you know. But this is kind of limitation, you know. And also, uh, there is kind of games in pipeline transportation. Um, there is American map. You guys know here is California, and here is New York, here is Texas. Uh, California side is kind of a very, very hot area for trucking business because there is always cargo because of what import always coming to this country. But this side we call East Side, where New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Nashville, Tennessee. There is always kind of small market because not the production line exists, but just the consumers are a lot, you know. Tourists, immigrants are always living here. That's why they eat and they produce trash more than cargo. And there was a huge game. Russian guys hacked the system, the, 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 the technology program system of this uh, pipeline, and they asked the, the United States to increase the, the rates. Absolutely, should that stuff can for them? And then after that, they could kind of allow the pipeline to move on. The United States left one week without any oil in the East Side, like four or five months ago. That way, we kind of increased the price of these areas in terms of load, load coverage. Now we are happy. <laughs> but for some parts, it's kind of not good. And last one is what? Um, trucking. All right. Yes. Okay, so he says it's the easiest way to deliver, and it is the cheapest, you say? Do you think it is the cheapest transportation mode? No? Okay, you know, he says uh, location precision is higher, right? So the, the delivery can go from point A to B without the need of other parties to join to help the deliver product. Yes, that's correct. What else? What do you think is the fastest transportation mode among these after A? Trucking, exactly. Yes. You can do local loads. Yes. We cannot do local loads where railway and water and air and pipeline. Exactly. Good. And also, uh, what do you guys think? Like, you guys see trucks in the streets, European trucks, no nose no trucks. And what do you guys think? How many kilometers can one truck run in Uzbekistan? He starts moving from the early morning, let's say from 8 a.m. Next day, from 8 a.m. to 8 a.m., how many kilometers can one driver run? How many? 6,000? 6, 600. Yeah, 600 kilometers. Okay. Any other ideas? 400, 900, okay, 600, different ideas, very good. Um, in America, if the driver is allowed as much as he can drive, he can drive up to 1,400 miles. I, I know I'm using strange words, 1,400 is not very good English, but this is how Americans is. 1,400 miles is one truck driver can drive. It's about 1,800 kilometers a day. But in Uzbekistan, yes, they can maximum drive 700 a day. Kilometers. It's going to be about uh, 570 uh, miles a day. So why do you think there is a huge difference, guys? Yes. Traffic jumps. All right. Yes. Some how? Highways. We have no highways, right? Okay. The road quality. Here we go. Okay, yes. 
you guys all are correct. I appreciate the answers. Actually, yes. The, the, the main point here is the road quality. Actually, if you see, if you if you ever go to regions of the country, you guys see a lot of like troublous roads, right? It's because of overweight. They don't load the uh, the load. They don't load the freight correctly. Overweight and so on. It's not all. And this makes the road quality bad. But people think the government is not making uh, building good roads, but they build good roads. But we make it bullshit, I'm sorry. Unfortunately. Um, yes, trucking is the best way of uh, delivering products from point A to B in the United States, and it is kind of becoming more trendy these days since the cost effectiveness after the air is the cheapest transportation mode. And after the pandemic, they kind of, uh, we changed the present in the United States. Trump went gone, right? So uh, he kind of closed the country. Uh, from China import and other European countries to make sure government kind of gives, uh, uh, kind of decreases the unemployment rate in the country. But you know, I mean, in America, the, the, the least salary is about $13 per hour. A guy, if he's gonna be, let's say, a black guy, black worker, Margot, he needs to at least earn $13 per hour. Now, I, when I was in the United States, I used to do t-shirts, uh, shirts for about five, seven, ten dollars in, in kind of sale, you know? But an American guy can sew these clothes for about three or four hours. Now, four hours is gonna be forty-five dollars minimum of just labor, labor price. Now, the, the cost went up so dramatically, everyone started complaining, and they changed the present. So Biden, the old grandpa, uh, kind of opened the road from China and everywhere. Nowadays, tons of imported goods are coming to the United States. They are stopping to produce internal products, but just to uh, to do some intellectual production, you know? They're kind of working on programming, they're kind of working on banking, uh, money transactions, but the, the rest of the things that, are, that require hard job are coming from imports. That's why we are kind of living not bad, you know? Lots of freight, lots of cargo. And um, can you go to two more slides? There are facts, but I don't want to stop there. Uh, in the flag, can you stop in the flag? Uh, can you see what the Show us. Here. Okay, he says, why are outsourcing is back as where they have been before? Okay. So, why do you think people started outsourcing in Uzbekistan? Uh, it, it has been so like trendy in Uzbekistan when I was having no car. I used to sit in a taxi and I, uh, at night. We work at nights mostly. It, it doesn't mean it is not a 24 hour shift. It does have some other shift, but I used to work from 5 to 2 a.m. In, in the midnight. So when I used to uh, catch a taxi, he used to ask, oh, can I You know, they have this kind of uh, habit of asking everyone what they do. Maybe they can fit and they can find a different job than being taxi driver. I said, like his skin. Like his skin, okay. Nowadays, now, when I was just giving my car to the master and I stopped the car and he again asked, another taxi driver asked, can you class? I said, like his skin. Oh, like his skin, I'm so good about it. So it has been kind of nowadays famous in among the people, you know. Uh, before, like 2014, 15, what we used to do, it wasn't that trendy because there was not many Uzbek drivers in the United States. Nowadays, everyone, aside Americans, are kind of getting interested into driving truck. A truck driver, how much do you think he can earn a month? Ten thousand dollars. Okay, any other Twenty-five k, right? Yes. Okay, she's using very good words. She's saying it depends on your owner operator or lease driver, so he's kind of professional like here. Nice. <laughs> so uh, I'll explain what the, what she means. Uh, anyways, so one truck driver can earn up to twenty thousand dollars easily per month. So a guy is sitting in. Uh, I'm not going to discriminate any region. Let's say I was going to choose one region, but I'm not going to now. So any any region guy went to United States who used to be cheaper before. Now he's sitting in truck and making twenty thousand dollars. And what do you think? Other guys won't join? Of course they will join. They don't care about family. Kind of they always need to be in the truck for about months and then they can come back to family. So every Uzbek guy, every Uzbek man, even women, we have in my company five ladies who work.
work who work as a driver. They are actually very good drivers. They drive over a thousand miles a day. Uh, so yes, they are very good drivers. And um, this number increased so bad within five years. So those drivers do not know English. Uh, they don't have time to learn English. And they don't know, uh, they don't have any quality like bachelor's degree or PhD or kind of masters. So the only thing they can do is cook something in Brooklyn or make uh, be a truck driver, you know. And for those people, uh, we need uh, such a person who knows Uzbek, English, and Russian for those like uh, Central Asian countries, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Serbia, Russia. That is why the demand for this kind of workers has increased dramatically over five or four years now. And um, there is a country we call India. Uh, they all control the Amazon system from India, you know, Indian guys. Um, they are actually dumb. They are not as clever as Uzbek guys, depending on my experience. But I called the Amazon management, Amazon.com, and I said, let's move the outsourcing system helping operations center in Uzbekistan. He said, you guys have corruption rate in English level of the people, English professions level is less than other countries. That hurt my heart, you know. Now I think uh, we just, I just need to give these kind of lectures to make sure people are kind of good at this knowledge and know English more. And in the future, we can somehow deal if we're gonna, we're gonna be together. Since uh, that, um, we only can serve those kind of, uh, we say, overseas countries. But it is not illegal. It is uh, legal. We just have outsourcing contracts. Every company in Pakistan have outsourcing contracts with American country uh, companies. They just work with outsourcing contract. But uh, unfortunately, some brokers should not know. Uh, we say brokers. Um, here, I need to stop and move to the next slide. Can you move to the next slide, Mr. I'll explain you guys the whole anatomy of uh, this industry. No, 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 back, uh, forward, I'm saying. Yes. All right, so um, the whole scenario we kind of need to know, everyone can see that, right? Okay, great. Um, we have to choose two industries to continue and to explain you guys all how this all works. So can I have two industries that need the cargo from each other? Any industry. Textile, okay. And textile products are needed to food. No, we only work in America, I said, right? So American logistics. Okay, let's say Apple. Ah, dry goods. Dry goods. All right, he's using great words now. Okay, let's say textile goods. Uh, we say uh, textile co. Uh, co. And uh, let's say uh, what city is this company located? Any city you guys know in the United States? Nevada. This is the state and the city. New York, Nevada. No, please. Austin, Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, Las Vegas, Nevada. Sin City. Okay. Las Vegas, Nevada. And we have the customer we call H&M, right? Uh, they produce apparel. So let's say this is located in California. Uh, let's say it's San Francisco, California. All right. So uh, these two companies always take product from each other. And uh, they work not on tons or kilograms, they say pounds, right? So let's say there is a demand for uh, 10,000 pounds of silk needed to H&M. Uh, today's date is what? Twelves. Tens? Twelves. They were different, the months are the first in there. And then delivery is going to be tomorrow, the next day, which is going to be 10, 13. See? So, H&M calls textile co says I need 10,000 pounds of silk tomorrow. So what they do is the the customers in the United States do not have their own trucks because having owning a truck is very expensive. So uh, maybe like 95% of the customers do not own truck. 
in order to own a truck, they first need to buy the truck or get it for lease. It's going to cost about $150,000 per truck. So a truck costs around that price. It depends on how good. It can go up to $300,000. And for uh, 10,000 pounds of silk needed to H&M, uh, today's date is what? Twelves. Tens? Twelves. They were different. The months are the first in there. And then delivery is going to be tomorrow, the next day, which is going to be 10, 13. See? So H&M calls textile calls says, I need 10,000 pounds of silk tomorrow. So what they do is the, the customers in the United States do not have their own trucks because having owning a truck is very expensive. So uh, maybe like 95% of the customers do not own truck. In order to own a truck, they first need to buy the truck or get it for lease. It's going to cost about $150,000 per truck. So a truck costs around that price. It depends on how good. It can go up to $300,000. Technology is expensive. Plus, if you own a truck, you need to always pay insurance of $400 or $500 a week. So you have a minimum of $2,000 extra big expenses. Even if you have orders, even if your truck is not moving, even if you are not doing anything, you pay for it. Plus, you need to own a driver for that. And driver cannot take, cannot wait for your load, just sit and earn, you know. One truck driver should at least be paid $2,000 a week. So another $2,000, even if you don't have any order. Zakazu yomu, yomi no truck bulu. Haraja. Paratamu, many truck, many customers do not own their own truck, and they use the third-party logistics services. Third-party logistics services, we call uh, carriers, right? Carrier, what do you mean? Carrier package. Kodak, what do you mean? Okay, Carrier is an asset-based company to deliver product from A to B. What is asset? This is Westminster, we know that, right? Trucks and whatever the company has. Trucking company. Trailers. This is very general answer. Trucking company has what? Trucks, trailers, and drivers. That's it. These are the three main assets of the company. Okay? So let's say my company. So uh, it is uh, this sign is really good. INS. Okay. So this company has trucks. This is a very beautiful truck. And drivers. And uh, we say back office. Back office is those officers who work from the office, do not drive the truck. Dispatcher, accountant, manager, supervisor, anyone, you know, tax manager. So here, a shipper, this is we call shipper in, in logistics. Shipper, and that one is who? Consignee. Receiver. Consignee is a, correct. So now, a uh, shipper cannot directly call the carriers and ask, I need your truck all the time, because there is go, there should be an insurance problem in the future. So what they do is there's going to be one more guy who's going to be joining this game. His guy is going to be called broker. So broker or tagetsa. So let's say any company, uh, XPL, right? So this is the broker company. Um, broker in Uzbekistan, there is only two or three broker companies who work uh, as a brokerage company. Why is that? Because it is very difficult to run a brokerage company. Uh, since finding a customer like Textile Co. and any other companies is very hard. Uh, a broker guy who works for this company, if he works for three months and does cold calls, follow this monkey, to, to find the customer and finds one customer in three months, he's going to be considered the best broker of the month. This is, the, this is the extent how it is difficult to find a client for your company. And if he's going to be spending six months and find one customer, one client only, he's going to be saying, okay, you're going to be getting pay rights for that. You know, this is very hard to find a customer. Uh, we tried to open a brokerage in Uzbekistan, and the language level we had was not enough. They only work with American people or real American speech people, you know. They are kind of discriminatory. I'm sorry, but yes. 
for that purpose, why is that good? Since broker finds one shipper, shippers should always work with this broker, like out everlasting. So broker will be sitting on profit everlasting. What does it mean is that uh, from Nevada to California, let's say um, we're gonna be paying shipper will pay uh, three thousand five hundred dollars. They deal on this contract. So uh, what broker's job is to find a truck, right? He doesn't own a truck. He should not own a truck. It, the, the permit doesn't allow. So there is a kind of board, we say uh, load board, Urzawa uh, In this load board, they always post the loads, the, the cargo. And there is guys who sit in the office, small heads, many heads. Many, many heads. We call dispatchers, you know. These guys will start calling this abuvlenia, postings, to book this freight as soon as possible. Because the freight, which is expensive, doesn't stay on market for longer than one minute. So the guy, dispatcher, talks to broker and negotiates. Here, if someone worked in markets in bazaar, they're going to be very good at negotiating. And it means you always need to be extrovert. If introvert person is going to work in this industry, he's not going to go long. I bet you. So now, the, the highest payment the broker wants to pay is like, let's say, $3,300. So $200 is the broker's money. So he won't get $200 as a whole. He will get about 10% out of it. The rest is company money. So $3,300 is going to be paid to carrier and they always see, we, we sit in Uzbekistan, we don't have any document to share with each other in hard copies. Everything is online. So they set the contract online, we call rate confirmation. Uh, rate means the, the payment that is paid for the carrier to deliver freight. So RC. And then we have everything and the company has different drivers. She said, owner, operators, lease. What it means that truck driver can buy a truck for himself, or he can lease from the company. In the future, he becomes an owner. Look at the So uh, these drivers have the right to, to choose the freight. If the, he doesn't like, he can say, I will, I will not take it. He will just reject it. And that's the hardest part of dispatcher's job. He kind of needs to strategically make money for driver, and sometimes. He needs to uh, obey the driver's caprice all the time. So now the driver says, okay, I will do that. And he comes to pick up to shipper, picks the load, and he will be given nakladnoi, we call bill of lading, you cut it. And he will deliver the product on time here. And this paper will be signed. Okay, driver came and we received proof of delivery. So now we need to get the money from uh, broker, right? So here we have the accounting department who does the job. As a general dispatcher and his assistant, we call update guy, uh, tracking and tracing guy, will stop his job on this driver's this frame. So accounting guy will start moving on to get the money from them. So in America, uh, there are different ways to pay the companies. Uh, there is one way, ACH, account-based payment. So it takes about 30 days from the broker to get paid for it. And for a carrier to wait for 30 days is not profitable because we pay the drivers every week. So in my company, we have about 100 trucks. And if you imagine like we make $15,000 each driver across, it's going to be $1.5 million. So now my boss should have $1.5 million every week in his pocket extra, which is impossible, right? Even if he has it, he doesn't want to give it. Yes. So ACH is no go. So they say oh, we can pay you quick pay. Uh, QP. So quick pay is going to be about 5% of charge. And this is not going to be again very good since if you're going to be like uh, making $1 million, you need to be paying how much? $15,000 for just transactions. 15, right? Yes, 15. So they, 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 there is kind of a third party, they say factoring. Uh, I don't think there is kind of company in Uzbekistan. Uh, factoring with the company. They join the broker and the carrier conversation. They say, I will pay the carrier tomorrow. I will get 1% from this carrier and wait for your money for one month. You know, this is a big big guy. 
big guy with a lot of money, Ahmad Dwai. So he, he kind of waits the broker's payment date and he will pay you next day. So carriers, all of them will choose this kind of company. So we got the money from the factory company, next day we are done with the history. This is the whole scenario of what we do every day as a company, you know, to make money. So, um, any questions so far? No? And uh, can you move to the next slide, Mr. Saidan? How much? No. They, they pay $600, they pay $700, they pay $7,000, so it depends on the season, it depends on the market, it depends on the truck dispatcher's uh, gumption to book roads, you know? It does not ever, it is not ever predicted. This, he, he actually pointed very good stuff. We never can say from point A to B, this is kind of this price these days, no. You can always change the market, always. Uh, I don't have any access to my company's database. You can see uh, we say front hall, back hall words, which means to die, Abrahma. To die, Vinam, Yashi Kolasis. Abrahma, Yashi Kolasis. But sometimes we, we make it differently. You take front hall this cheaper price, and back hall is going to be expensive. So we cannot say market is this way. $600, they pay $700, they pay $7,000. So it depends on the season, it depends on the market, it depends on the truck dispatchers. Uh, gumption to book roads, you know, it does not ever, it is not ever predicted. This, he, he actually pointed very good stuff. We never can say from point A to B, this is kind of this price these days. No, you can always change the market, always. Uh, I don't have any access to my company's database. You can see uh, we say front hall, back hall words, which means to die, Abrahma, to die, Vinam, Yashi Kolasis, Abrahma, Yashi Kolasis. But sometimes we, we make it differently. You take front hall this cheaper price and back hall is going to be expensive. So we cannot say market is this way all the time. But yes, there is kind of time, uh, money money terms in terms of frame. You can say it can play from three to four thousand dollars. But it depends. Actually from Nevada, California, I can kind of guess we have six thousand dollars of freight that we got yesterday. Say what? Range by range, what do you mean? How long, how long do you keep the broker on? Okay, so uh, broker always says uh, tries to sell the loads, the cargo more cheaper. This is the golden rule of his work, right? But he says, what's the range of money that we can ask from broker? It depends small on the situation. If the broker needs to close this freight faster because the facility shipper will close down you can ask as much as you want but if you are starting the general day and you are kind of asking money you can add, uh, increase up to five hundred dollars this is the general increase on the price let's say uh, from chicago to pennsylvania they pay around three thousand dollars minimum so if, if you can ask $3,500, some broker says no, because they contract for a cheaper price. Some broker says, okay, I can do that because they have 5000 in it. So you don't know until you book some freight. And as a dispatcher, if you guys, some of you guys may be working in this industry, if you guys don't know, as a good dispatcher, who is dispatcher? Dispatcher is, can you move to the next slide? I am kind of running behind the slide. So uh, dispatcher. Is not always lady, I just found this picture from the internet. Uh, dispatcher is a person who stands between driver and the company. His main and her main aim is to make money for the company. Uh, but as a good dispatcher, uh, you can work differently over time. Uh, the best dispatcher would be the, the one who has the broker audition. So this guy uh, should be like five or six brokers who are your close friends. Uh, when I was a dispatcher, nowadays I don't book freight. Uh, I used to have a paper uh, notebook. I used to jot down the contacts of each broker who gave the best loads. I used to call them every day and they were kind of, Dave, is this you again? I said, yes, baby. So he always, now, he, whenever I call him, says, okay, Dave, I have this freight. Right away he will send it to me, you know. I used to kind of make 48 pages of notebook with 48 states of each broker's contact and gain five brokers and they are still my friends. 
They even want to come to Uzbekistan recently. So they, they always call me, uh, I can't say that, but they always call me differently with Bulgar words and say, okay, I have this friend for you, my friend. I say, okay, send him. Even if I don't have a job, I need to find him because he's doing a favor for me to give the best, right? And I am making good money. So to make the price-wise increase in terms of rate is first of all dependent on your broker audition, you know? As soon as you become more friendly with brokers, they always pay you more. Uh, but on the other side of the coin, you can kind of play with broker. Uh, if the broker is not a big guy, a manager who gets the percentage out of the sold loads, let's say just the sales agent, you could kind of somehow play with him by giving him some bribery. So let's say uh, he's going to say from this A to B, I'm going to pay you 3000 You say, can you pay me $3,500? 200 is yours, 300 is mine. You just send him to his account, he will always give you best loads. You know? There is always this kind of case as well. But doing this, you should be very careful. You should be very close to friends with broker. If this kind of case is going to be done like from the first call, they will definitely block you in the system and you will never be able to book freight from them and from other brokers as well if they're going to report you on kind of centralized system we call 411 so they DM you this kit push push and uh, what is that next point? so how to become one? so to be dispatcher what do you need to do? what do you say? Speak English, very good, yes, you need to be able to speak English. Uh, actually, uh, you don't need to speak perfect English because the brokers themselves do not speak perfect English. They kind of shorten the conversation to make sure they kind of will work more than usual, you know. Uh, I used to be very good English speaker, but nowadays my English is broken so bad. I'm sorry, but yes, this industry will break your language level. Kind of, because you always try to speak less and work more and make good money because every dollar makes a difference for your salary. And the next one for this guy would be uh, gaining experience or being a shocker for someone who is working in this industry or uh, opening a, a company for yourself. If you if you have like permit to live in the United States or if you have I'm a Kehola in the United States who has green card, you can say Toga, let's open the company, make good money. Tons of guys are doing this, and this guy who is my co-worker has Amake, he's also working this way. So and you can study at the language I mean language, I'm sorry, logistics schools. Any logistics school that teach you good, uh, gain somehow a certificate out of it and try to uh, find the work, I, I mean employer, and then start working. This is the main stuff that you need to do. First, know English. Second, gain experience or gain knowledge out of it. Whenever you go to work and they start interviewing you, what is read confirmation of who is driver, what is the job duties of driver, and what you're going to do the, on your daily basis, you should be able to speak, okay, yes, I know this, and, and I don't know this, and this is illegal, this is not legal, and yes, I work in this shift, you need to kind of know how this atmosphere feels. And uh, many of the uh, people who come to my workplace or our school says, uh, can I work in this industry? Mostly ladies ask these kind of questions because everyone thinks uh, we work in the time frame of, time frame of United States. Uh, yes, actually, 50% uh, of our workers work in the time frame of United States. So right now it is, no, it's 8 a.m. in New York now. So right now, after five minutes in my office, guys will start calling brokers and look for it. So yes, from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m., this is the main part of the job, but it doesn't mean we work only eight or nine hours. So we should always control the shipment. So we have from 9 to 6, which is Uzbek schedule, and from 5 to 2 and 2 to 10 a.m. And many of the students actually work during these uh, days because they have school. They work overnight or at five from five to two. But ladies who already uh, finished the universities or who have good English, who are in uh, jobless or between the jobs, uh, they can work in this industry from nine to six. It's just for Uzbek culture. Like they should not be out like at night, midnight, right? So yes, it, it is possible to work for any person, but the age from the age would be nice if it is like over 18. 
Why? Because um, it's not always enough to know English, guys. Since you kind of need to uh, contradict with driver's knowledge. Um, you need to have some life experience to speak to driver because he's not always smart. But when person earns a lot of money, he, he starts being smart, you know? And you need to kind of show them this is not the way of work. And you need to have, how we say, duch to speak good to... Uh, show that he's not correct. So it's not always enough to know English or to just gain experience to make good money. And what is that next? Salary, right? Salary. How much a dispatcher earns? Okay. <clears throat> so uh, what's the name? Jorabek, thank you very much. He says it depends on the dispatcher's contract. Right? So, what does contract mean? Shartnama. So, in English, yes? Ah. Okay, so contract, yes. This dispatcher would be the, the one who has contract with brokers. It means you don't always survive in the market. You have constant freights to be given to your driver every day. Yes, you will be given the best salary in the house, correct. So the, in, in terms of uh, quantitative uh, numbers, we can say, uh, in my own experience, we pay, for example, my workers from $400 as a start to be an assistant of dispatch. So, and then a person works as good as possible. Let's say a good dispatcher would control about seven to eight drivers. He can control over 10 drivers, but his quality will definitely go down.